Chapter 2. Understanding Fundraising Story with a Brain Scanner. Philanthropy originates in story. In the earliest foundations of human social cooperation, story is at the center. In the empathy development of preschool children, story is at the center. In the personal motivations for major gifts of wealth, story is at the center. What is it? But what is story? What do we mean by that word? When do we have it? When do we not? Different sources give different answers. There are many different lists of elements of a story. Any particular story contains many elements, but at its core, what is essential for a story? Character and plot. A story requires two elements, character and plot. Without character and plot, it isn't a story. With character and plot, it is. Other elements may be nice, but they don't define a story. A story can have a theme, but so can a financial statement. A story can have a point of view, but so can a structural engineering report. These elements can appear in a story, but they don't create a story. However, if there is character and plot, there is a story. Having character and plot makes it a story. But this doesn't always make it a good story. It may not be a useful or persuasive story. So what does it take to create a compelling story? Good story. Unfortunately, it's hard to create a good story. The skills may take years to learn. Even years of practice doesn't guarantee mastery. There is no simple blueprint for becoming a Faulkner or Hemingway. Reading this chapter or any other won't turn you into Steinbeck. So now what? Compelling story is subjective. It is an art. But there is something objective about it, the way it looks in the brain. Fundraising story. Compelling fundraising story does something special. It leads to giving. Neuroimaging shows what this looks like in the brain. In these studies, giving is triggered by one social emotion. This comes from two identifying with another. In other words, perspective plus empathy. This is aided by three visualization. These steps work unless. They work unless they are interrupted by four, rational error detection. Let's look at each of these steps in more detail. One, social emotion. What's the goal of Effective Story? In his workshop for aspiring Hollywood screenwriters, Michael Haug explains, No matter what kind of storyteller you are, you have one primary objective. You are really here to learn only one thing, and that is how to elicit emotion. This goal of eliciting emotion is a bit narrower for the fundraiser. Fundraisers encourage sharing with others. This means they must elicit social emotions. A story that makes us hungry or horny does trigger emotion. It might even make a good screenplay for certain genres. However, those aren't the kind of emotions that help with fundraising. Instead, compelling fundraising story must generate social emotions my personal struggle. <laughs> Fundraising story is about emotion. It's about social emotion. This may seem obvious, but please understand this is hard for me. I'll admit it. Data analytics research geeks like me don't do emotion. So in my research, I tried to avoid it. 
In one project, I went looking exclusively for logic. I had already published findings about giving and cognition. Higher scores on logical cognitive tests led to more donations. Now, I wanted to learn which tests worked best. This study involved a large group of older adults, a mean age of 76. They completed 18 different panels of logical cognitive tests. The tests measured math, memory, reading, and other logical tasks. Plot twist. <laughs> Here's what happened. Only four among those 18 tests strongly predicted donations. These four were also the only tests that required drawing. Yes, drawing. In one test, people were shown a card with three geometric figures. They then attempted to reproduce the drawing from memory. In another test, they drew lines to complete a complex connect-the-dots task. The answer. What on earth did this mean? The answer was surprising. Spatial memory, tested by drawing, and social emotion are linked. The same hormone influences both. Connected brain areas process both. The two regions border each other. Among this elderly group, some regions of neural degeneration would be no surprise. Any deterioration at this place would do two things. It would lower scores on spatial memory drawing tests, and it would reduce social-emotional processing. <sighs> My attempt to ignore social emotion had failed. I was like Jonah, fleeing in the opposite direction. But despite my best efforts, I had been captured, returned, and spit back on the shore. <laughs> I couldn't avoid it. Philanthropy was about social emotion. The same answer everywhere. Fortunately, not everyone is so stubborn. Neuroscience research has repeatedly found the same connection. For example, injecting the social bonding hormone oxytocin increases giving. Neuroimaging shows the connection too. Even the first neuroimaging study of giving found it. Donation decisions uniquely engaged a brain region that, quote, plays key roles in social attachment and affiliative reward mechanisms in humans and other animals. Philanthropy is about social emotion. As neuroimaging technology evolved, a more detailed answer emerged. 2. Identifying Perspective Plus Empathy a later study used more advanced neuroimaging. What predicted charitable giving? It was activation in a brain region used for valuing social-emotional outcomes. No surprise there. But this activation depended on input from two other brain regions. One shifts attention to focus on another's perspective. The other plays a role in empathy. Both parts were needed. Both together made donating feel valuable. This, in turn, predicted giving. In other words, perspective activation plus empathy activation leads to social-emotional valuation activation leads to a donation. Identifying with the character. Story requires both character and plot, but it starts with character. Plot cannot be compelling unless we care about the characters. In effective fundraising story, social emotion is the goal. That's what triggers the donation. But social emotion requires specific character elements. The audience must be able to 1. Understand the character's perspective and 2. Empathize with the character. In other words, they must identify with the character. As an equation, this would be identify equals perspective plus empathy. In neuroimaging, identifying, perspective plus empathy, leads to social-emotional valuation, leads to a donation.
An effective story starts with a character. It starts with a character the audience can identify with. Charities like to focus on their stories. Charity insiders find these stories compelling. They know the characters. They care about the characters. But a donor is not the same. He may not know these characters. That's a critical difference. The charity's story might have a great plot, but unless the donor identifies with the characters, that doesn't matter. If a donor doesn't care, the story can't work. Like me. Who is the easiest character to identify with? The answer is yourself. Taking your own perspective isn't hard. Having empathy for yourself comes naturally. This reality applies to story. Storytelling guru Robert McKee explains, quote, empathetic means like me. This also applies to fundraising. Donors identify with those they feel are like them in some meaningful way. When a person is like me, it's easier to take their perspective. It's easier to empathize with them. We might argue that a story about thousands of people ought to be compelling. But this isn't a good character. It's a story about a number. It's not a story about a character like me. A story about one person is different. That character can be like me. In fundraising, the story about one person works better than the story about thousands. In brain imaging, a story about one person does something else. It generates more perspective and empathy activation. It helps people identify perspective plus empathy with another. This leads to donations. The most compelling fundraising story is the donor's story. But any story can become the donor's story to some extent. As the donor identifies with the story characters, the story becomes the donor's story. 3. Visualizing Social emotion is the goal. It triggers giving. This requires identifying with the character. It requires perspective plus empathy. But before identifying comes visualizing. If we want people to feel something, we must first get them to see something. In neuroimaging, words trigger internal visual representations. The story increases this experience. That's what makes it powerful. The back of the brain processes vision. One region is called the lingual gyrus. It doesn't have anything to do with speech. It just looks like a tongue. <laughs> this area processes complex scenes and faces. It's also used in internal visualization. Damaging this area means losing the ability to dream. Reading disconnected sentences triggers a little bit of lingual gyrus activation. Reading sentences in a story format triggers dramatically more activation. Visual philanthropy. What about fundraising? It's hard to recreate major gift decisions in the lab, but we can ask people about charitable bequests. These are usually the largest donation a person will ever make. Also, these are gifts of wealth holding, not just disposable income. What's unique about these decisions? You guessed it, it's lingual gyrus activation. More activation means more desire to make a charitable bequest gift. But that isn't all. These decisions also activate the precunious. This area is used when we take an outside perspective on ourselves. It's required for visual imagery of autobiographical memories. Thus, charitable bequest decisions are driven by visualized autobiography. This isn't just about visual story. This is about the donor's story. Second verse, same as the first.
Exposing preschoolers to storybooks develops their prosocial skills. This comes from specific story elements. These are whole, well-rounded characters that trigger the reader's identification and evoke emotional responses. What increases giving? Neuroimaging says visualizing, identifying, perspective plus empathy, and social emotion. Notice the parallels. The answers are the same. Apparently, what works for preschoolers also works for donors. 4. No rational error detection. The final element of a successful story is actually the absence of an element. Emotion is powerful, but the brain prevents runaway emotional decisions. It has a break. That break comes from regions that detect logical errors or conflicts. This puts cognitive control on emotional decisions. These regions are like an accountant who shouts, I object. They often activate in response to number calculations. These are mathematical, logical, error-detecting brain regions. They can interrupt social-emotional processes. The lesson for fundraising story is twofold. First, a successful story must make sense. You can't get lost in a story if obvious errors keep pulling you out of it. Second, logical reasoning is the brake. It's not the engine. Preventing a logical, mathematical objection is important. These could interfere with an otherwise effective visual emotional story. But math or logic can't drive a story. They can't drive a gift they can only stop it. Conclusion. Story means character and plot. But what makes compelling fundraising story? In neuroimaging, it triggers visualizing, identifying perspective plus empathy, and social emotion without error detection. That's what it looks like in the brain scanner, that's the technical outcome. But how do we make it happen? The next chapter begins to explore this. It examines practical techniques that create this magical result.